So um, I grew up in a, a suburban town outside of New York in, uh, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I had no training in art whatsoever. Um, I didn't really know much about art. My family was kind of a lower middle class family. There was not, um, there was not much. We had, t we had TV and radio and that was about it. Uh, so I was the first child in the family to go to the university. And of course, being an Italian American first child to go, I had to become a doctor. So I went to university to study medicine. And, um, and when I got there, I met a girl and she, uh, we went dancing and she's like, you know, you should go take a dance class. You're pretty good. So I kind of followed her into the dance class. And in that dance class, the lightning bolt struck me. And I realized I had a body that I didn't understand anything about. And then I uh, met a teacher who was there as a guest artist, the great Steve Paxton. So it was a very lucky accident. Um, and I studied medicine and dance for the first couple of years. And then I just realized I was much more excited about dance than I was about um, uh, organic chemistry. So when I met Steve, he was developing a form called contact improvisation, which really is kind of an art sport. And the idea is that the body is um, just looked at as um, uh, through, the, through the lens of gravity and weight and momentum. And you join two bodies together at a point of contact that, that continually changes throughout the body. So, so the two bodies are always uh, rolling around each other through a point of contact. And by giving your weight into that point, you can begin to actually become weightless. So it got, it's very acrobatic. The people that I've chosen are people that I've had personal contacts with and that uh, particularly influenced me. So I didn't choose them because they're, uh, they're great historical figures, although they are. I chose them because I happened to be in relationship to them when I was coming into the dance world. So it's a very personal uh, curation. I will say. Um, this revolution in, uh, in dance and postmodernism was happening at the same time that there was a revolution in art, uh, visual art, and they were very related, where the uh, people were moving, the artists were moving away from narrative and figurative uh, interest. Uh, it wasn't about reproducing reality through paint, it was about stripping it down to the essentials of color and form, and so that was happening in dance as well. There would never be a discussion amongst these artists for example, I worked with Trisha Brown, uh, you would never talk about the meaning of the movement. You'd only talk about the execution, the weight, the gravity, the position of your body. And so there was no, there was no accent really on um, what do I mean by this movement. It's really about how I'm executing it. The three historical works that I'm produ uh, presenting here in Montpellier are, uh, the first one is Tread by Merce Cunningham uh, with music by Christian Wolf, which is being played live. Um, and uh, there's a set, a visual design by uh, Bruce Nauman, the great, amazing conceptual artist from America. Uh, and that was made around 1970. And then uh, the next work is um, by Yvonne Rayner, and it's called Trio A with Flags, a very important work that really further challenged what dance can be by removing any sense of phrasing or inflection to the movement. Um, and then uh, the third work is by the great Steve Paxton. Uh, it's an excerpt from Goldberg Variations. I, I come from a, uh, a tradition of no tradition. So, uh, I, you know, uh, because I started dancing late with no understanding of dance history, um, it was very much uh, born from the punk era of do-it-yourself. So I, I believe it's very important to have collaborators that I, I can talk to and I can fight with and I can laugh with. Uh, so that we could find, try to discover something new together. So in American Landscapes, I'm working with uh, Joseph Van Meisem and um, uh, Jim Jarmusch, the film director and guitar player. I come in with some ideas that I've been researching intellectually, and I don't generally start moving unless I'm with my dancers. So it's a very social moment. I come into the studio, I begin to move, and they begin to speak back to me with their bodies, and then we begin to assemble movement that fits the idea that I'm working on. Uh, and then I give them a structure, uh, a form within, within which to play with that movement, and that becomes the creation that you'll see. And well, in this case, in American Landscapes, I was working with iconic American images. Uh, and uh, so one very important image when I was growing up was Muhammad Ali. 
uh, because you know there was a lot of racial tension when I was growing up, but everybody loved uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, his name and his name was Cassius Clay before it was Muhammad Ali, and so there was a very big conversation culturally about that change of his name and who he was as a a, a, a man of color and a man of power in America. So uh, he appears in the piece through some of his uh, some of the photographs of him uh, fighting. Uh, also, Rosie the Riveter, great um, uh, iconic woman of uh, power that uh, represented women moving into the workforce in America while the men were uh, serving to, to fight during the war. So images like that uh, I bring in and then we begin to play with them together. Well, it's my latest creation and, um, you know, as I go back and I look at these great works uh, in postmodern history, um, it's for me it's like... Uh, if you read Moby Dick when you're 20, and then you read Moby Dick when you're 30, and then you read Moby Dick when you're 50, uh, so you get a very different perspective on what those uh, great works bring you. So for me, it's a chance to, to re-experience the works. Not only am I giving, giving them to you, but I'm giving them to me. So I look at them, how they're built, and they have an effect on how I create. Uh, I, I won't tell you more about that because it's still a mystery to me.